Albert Breer joining us from Chicago. Well, uh, not Chicago. Is it is it still in Bourbon A, Illinois, where the Bears are, are practicing, Albert? Yeah, it, it's, it's definitely not Chicago. It's <laughs> Bourbon A. And I, have, I think I have a solution for your catch-no-catch catch thing. Yes, sir. Um, and I, I said this one after the Dez catch. I feel like, and I don't know what sixth grade Rich was like, but I know sixth grade Albert, all, on the schoolyard, there was never any doubt about what was a catch or what wasn't a catch when you were playing touch football or whatever, right? Like, yes. you just knew. So why don't we park a 12-year-old up there in the booth? <laughs> I like it. Right? Uh, like yeah. 12-year-old, 12-year-old me, 12-year-old you. I feel like we knew. It's you, simple. You always knew. That was one of the things that never really got argued. Like, you, it was just easy. It was, you could always tell what was a catch and what wasn't a catch. Yeah, but don't you think I if like you're – I year old I think, I think the 12-year-old's got insight. But, but that opens up another door, Albert, because right now when uh, Al Riveron, the new head of NFL refs, uh, is talking to a ref, um, let's say, you know, hockeyly in the stadium about making a decision, you don't need the says who, says me – you know, and then sticks to, you know, what I say bounces off me and sticks to you like glue. We don't need that sort of stuff, you know? Right. It would, it, right. it really could delay things a little right. longer. Right. Right. I, I just think, you know, like I said, like, I just think, uh, <laughs> Like, like the 12-year-old can be the director of common sense. I love it. You know? <laughs> so is a 12-year-old going to start for the Bears in week one, to use this as an <laughs> What do you got well, for me? You know what's, here's what's so interesting about it, Rich, is like, and, and I, I feel like people forget this sometimes, but what the Bears did is effectively what Philly did last year, you know, and that Philly paid a veteran, a, a high-end veteran in Sam Bradford, and then brought in a backup in Chase Daniel, and then traded up twice to get Carson Wentz. And yeah, they got lucky on the back end of that by dealing off um, by dealing off Sam Bradford after the Teddy Bridgewater injury. But if Carson Wentz is the right quarterback for the next 15 years, no one's going to remember what they paid Sam Bradford or what they paid Chase Daniel. And it's the same thing here. You know, I, I don't know whether or not Mitch Trubisky or Mike Glennon is a long-term answer here, but I do think that this is a new way of doing things where you just throw as many darts and as at, at the dartboard as he possibly can throw resources at the position because if you get it right no one's going to remember what you got through what, what you what you went through to get there well that's true but now so but you're you are really you're you're i guess dancing around the third rail here um because the question is is did they get it right i mean and and in right. this and in you know when when the nfl network first started uh, no one was really talking much about first practices you had to look in the agate type in your newspaper to see anything going on for transactions um, on any front. Now, right. now you're looking at social media and you got the fact that Trubisky fumbled the ball three times and snaps over the weekend. So that adds a little bit of pressure to the situation, Albert. No question. And that's the thing is like, you know, I, one of the things I know um, that they worked on in the spring with Mitch was stuff that you wouldn't think an NFL quarterback back would have to work on taking a snap, spitting out a play call in the huddle. That's stuff he didn't do in high school or college. Like he's literally never done that stuff before. And so, you know, I think part of this is, you know, you use 2017 to get answers on Mike Glennon and the contract allows you to get out from underneath him if he's not the answer. And in doing that, you also get Mitch Trubisky up to speed. Now, I, I look, I talked to a lot of teams that didn't think any of the quarterbacks this year were first rounders. And so the fact that somebody gave up what the Bears gave up to go up one spot from three to two to pick, pick one of those guys, obviously there's doubt. And there are a lot of people who don't think the Bears got it right. Uh, but, you know, if you look at it just conceptually and, and, and the way it sets up, you know, you take a shot at Mike Glennon, who's never had a full-time shot as an NFL starting quarterback. If it doesn't work, you can bail after a year. And in going through that, you give Mr. Trubisky what, what, you, what he needs, which is, you know, a, a true redshirt year in 2017. Well, uh, let, does John Fox get that same wiggle room? I, think, well, no, I, I, I mean, look, I don't think that – I don't think anyone's safe here right now. You know, it's, it's been three years, and so you need to – start to see the team turn some corners and that's you know i think based on what they inherited you know the the, the upper management knew that the first two years were going to be rough this is when you have to start to see progress and i think for everybody here that means does kevin white get on the field because he was a high-end pick does, is leonard floyd what they thought he was going to be when they traded up for him in 2016 and so i think as much as anything else for these guys to survive and for there not to be changes in 2018 in Chicago, you have to come at least out of this season thinking, okay, maybe this could be a playoff team next year. I don't know if they're a playoff team right now, but 
I think at least those young players need to develop where you see that sort of promise coming out of the season. Albert Breer, the MMQBs. Albert Breer joining us from uh, Bears training camp. Meanwhile, in Baltimore, um, ESPN's Diana Rossini says that Ozzie Newsom and John Harbaugh have given their approval to bring Colin Kaepernick on, but Steve Bashotti, the owner, is resistant. What can you add to this, Albert? I think a lot of it's going to ride on Joe Flacco's health. Um, you know, and I, I know there was an outcry when they, you know, they signed the realtor or whatever last week to play quarterback, but I, they needed a camp arm, and that's what that was. And you are never going to go through what you're going to have to go through to bring in Colin Kaepernick to have him there for seven to ten days. And so I think part of this is going to boil down to, you know, where Joe Flacco's health is at and that the plan was, and we're coming up on that time now, to, to, to get him off his feet for a week and then reassess where he's at. Um, he's 32 years old. Back problems generally don't go away. Um, they can linger. They can pop back up. And so, you know, I think the medicals on Joe Flacco, you know, will, will sort of help tell the tale here where, um, you know, if the, the Ravens feel like, you know, this could come back up in October or November and we have a serious problem here, we're going to have to find a way to create a threat on offense. And Colin Kaepernick, based on what he's done in the past, based on the fact that Greg Roman's in the building, is somebody who I think they believe – uh, would be able to do that to, to do that for them in a pinch if Flacco were to go down. So you're saying that uh, barring a, an, e- an increased football need, this isn't happening? I, I just think, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think if, if you, if they sign Colin Kaepernick, you'll know that they're nervous about Joe Flacco's back. So there you is, know, I, so, so I guess then there is a football need threshold that the Ravens, are, are even a yeah. willing will uh, well, that that exists I mean, here's, here's, that they'd be willing to entertain this? Okay, so here's the thing, right? Like, and I think this is the best way to look at it. Back of the job of backup quarterback and starting quarterback, those are separate jobs, right? That's why it never made sense to just rank the top 64, the top 96. The backup quarterback has got to be ready for game day without getting any reps in practice. He's got to be the hardest worker in your building. He's got to be a caddy in certain ways to your starter because that's the other set of eyes outside the coaching staff that the starter is going to have. And Colin Kaepernick isn't a great fit for that. But if he's going to be your starting quarterback, if you're going to need somebody for six to eight weeks to, to, to be able to create that threat, that's different. He is a good fit for that. And so I think part of this for, for, for the Ravens is looking at it and saying, we don't look at him. We, we, we don't, we're not going to bring him in here as a conventional backup quarterback. That, that's not what he is. Um, you know, that's not what he's built for, you know, but if we're nervous that there could be a period here where we're going to be without Joe Flacco for an extended period of time, he is somebody who would fit as a starter. And so if they forecast that and they say to themselves, you know, we could be, we, we, we could be up blanks Creek, you know, in October, um, then I could certainly see where they say Colin Kaepernick's the right guy. He can create a threat for us if Flacco goes down and we want to bring him in. The, uh, the MMQB's Albert Breer joining us here. Our poll question today is who's winning the NFC East, which is obviously a fluid situation ordinarily. Uh, Sterling Shepard went down. It's being called right now as we're chatting an ankle injury, not a knee injury. So we'll keep an eye on that. And then there's the Ezekiel Elliott situation. Certainly if he right. might miss games and then games against the Giants, no less. What is the deal with this? Are, are, is the league know, does the league know what they're doing and they just don't want to do it while Jerry's getting inducted in the Hall of Fame? What's the you, scoop here? Rich, do you remember like how the Josh Gordon situation dragged out? Yes. And how, and I, I remember, I, I don't remember what year it was, but April and May. And then it was, what are they doing with Josh Gordon? Um, I think this is similar to that, where... You know, the legal intentionally drag its feet with these investigations sometimes because they don't fully trust the player. And the last thing they want is to make a decision before they have to. And then three weeks later, the player gets in trouble and the league looks stupid for taking it easy on them. And so I think that's part of it, part of the equation here with Zeke, where, and we've seen this with guys, again, guys like Gordon who have history, is, okay, let's make sure that he behaves himself and let's make sure that, 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 you know, he acts in a way that reflects well in the league. And then when we have to make a decision, we'll have more information. And so that's where I think Zeke's on shaky ground here to some degree. I mean, in the time since that happened, you have the St. Patrick's Day thing, you have the bar fight and, and in a vacuum, neither of those are big deals, but it kind of, 
plays into a larger pattern of behavior that I think is troubling for the Cowboys in the league. So we will hear something before the season? Not at all? I mean, yeah, before the season. Okay. I, I don't, I, I don't know that there's any rush to do it, you know, in the next two weeks, especially like you said, I hadn't even thought of that element of it that Jerry's going into the hall oh, yeah, they, this they, weekend. But that's, but, 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 but I mean, I guess that means we're not going to get the Friday news dump this week, right? No, so, no, 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 no. Uh, that, that is yeah. not happening on the day that Jerry's getting his jacket put on right. and the commissioner's in the same so, building. And no, that, I don't think but, so. But, but you think about it, though, Rich. I mean, like, look, you know, part of this, again, like, and, and, and a lot of times people say, well, that's not fair to the team. Well, I mean, look, Zeke had the reputation for partying coming out of Ohio State the same way that Josh Gordon had the reputation for pot coming out of Baylor, right? So, I mean, the league can look at these teams in some cases and say, well, you knew what you were buying, buying into here. So, we're not going to give you a break. We're going to collect as much information as we can, let some time pass, and then we'll be able to make the informed final decision we're not going to wind up looking bad because of something that happens a few weeks after we made a decision a little earlier than we had to. Well, look, I don't like usually ending segments correcting my guests, but Zeke didn't have those reputations coming out of Ohio State. He had it coming out of the Ohio State. <laughs> he also had a ring. <laughs> <laughs> is, oh, Albert. Is, is the connection still val uh, good? Yeah. Is he still there? <laughs> Albert, Albert I, I lost. You dropped out, Albert. You dropped out. I, Albert me. went away to Yolena on you, Rich. <laughs> Take care, Albert. All right, thank you. Right. That's Albert. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on radio stations across the country and audience. If you like that, please download our app. There's lots of fun things there other than just more of the videos you just saw. You can call us from the app. You can email us from the app. Just download it. Trust me, you'll enjoy it.